In today's episode of Handmade, we're going to see how images from ordinary magazines turn into this. It's collage on steroids. Welcome to Handmade, a series about artisans and craftsmen who use their creativity and skills to make unique works of art. In our modern world, it seems like everything is mass-produced, pre-packaged, and available on Amazon. So it's easy to forget that some things are still made by hand. So come on, let's go visit the studio of today's featured artisan. You know, I really love to create with paper. It can be cut, torn, sliced, ripped, painted. I don't really care, I like them all. I just like to reassemble them and make something different. I'm particularly drawn to the look, the color and texture of torn magazines and the fact that they're so malleable by nature. When we were talking before the show, you mentioned that your first degree was in chemistry and then a second degree as an MBA and you worked as a global management consultant. That's a very yeah. impressive resume. How did you get interested in art and specifically collage? Well, I began actually after my first husband passed away. He, uh, he passed away 12 years ago and I, was, I went back to work right away and didn't take any time to grieve and finally realized I just need to take some time off. And if I'm going to cry for a month, I'm going to cry for a month. And the funny thing is we had just moved into a new house two weeks earlier uh, from when he passed away. So I still had boxes. I started to unpack the boxes and I found a box of his old art when he went to art school. They were practice drawings, so they weren't the kind that you would frame and hang on the wall, but I couldn't make myself throw them away. I didn't want to just stuff them under the bed. I had this idea that I felt shattered from this experience and that I needed to pick up my puzzle pieces and come back to life. So I decided to cut up his art. It's this piece of art back behind you is actually the first one I did. And I didn't set out to make a beautiful piece of art. I actually just set out to facilitate my grieving process, I suppose. So I cut up pieces of art. I assembled it into a new puzzle. And it didn't, it was fine. It was very helpful for my grief. I would work through some of the images and one would make me laugh and one would make me cry. And one would make me mad and all kinds of feelings I didn't really expect to have, but it facilitated the processing of those feelings. Collage is a very diverse medium. Why do you like working with magazines? Magazines just make me happy for a lot of reasons, some that you might not uh, even expect. Collage in general appeals to me because it's very accessible to a novice. I didn't know, need to know how to paint. I right. didn't need to know how to draw. I could use images that already existed. And so I found that it was a fun and easy way to make art as a novice. So that's maybe just the practical side. There's also a, a philosophical side to it. A good part of my career was related to communication. And so the communication aspect of print and the fact that we can take something that's in print, words, or we can take images and we can reconstruct them and suddenly they mean something entirely different than the original message. I like to be able to look at a collage of a face, for instance, and then realize that there is a piece of an automobile in the cheek or that what she's dressed in is furniture or something that you just didn't expect right. at all. What are some of your favorite subjects and what inspires you about them? I love faces. I don't know exactly why I love to do faces. Maybe I just, I love looking at people's faces. I love the expressions. I love that one small thing in an, an expression could be a, be a raised eyebrow or it could be a sparkle in the eye or it could be a position of the head or just a twitch of the lips. Who knows? It can say something entirely different. And I enjoy the fact that people can look at a piece of art that's a face and interpret that face and the expression 
even maybe differently than I did when I was doing the piece. And I love to do abstracts too. The medium really lends itself to just fooling around with color and shapes and those are just abstract. How is your personality reflected in your work? It's a project. Projects have always appealed to me. Um, my career was about projects. Sure. So I love art in general because I can take something from beginning to end. I really love collage because it's, uh, it's malleable. You can fail, you can totally fail. Do the worst, ugliest collage you've ever done and throw it away. It's just paper or you can paste over it and make it something, or you can cut it up and put it in a, in a new collage. I love the fact that I can experiment, and that is probably part of my nature. Are there any artists or styles that you particularly like? Oh, well, I like Rex Ray. You'll see a few of my collages are uh, motivated by Rex. They're simple to do because they're shapes and they're pictures. Um, I like, uh, well, if we go way back, I like Picasso. The first, first collages ever came from Picasso. I'm motivated by how he took images, again, that didn't belong. He took words. He took things out of uh, um, newspapers and put them with pieces of wallpaper, and somehow you have a Picasso. I love, in general, just I spend more time than I'd like to admit going through the internet looking for artists that I find interesting. And in fact, more often than not, I find somebody who paints something beautiful. And I ask myself, could I mimic that effect just with ripped up papers? Could I take a, a vase that they have made look transparent with paint and could I possibly do that with a collage, just ripped up paper. Right. What words of wisdom would you have to somebody who was just like to try their hand at, at collage? Oh, well, go get a magazine <laughs> and start to rip it up and just place it down. We'll, I'll show you a little while later how easy it is to take images and colors and just place them into various spaces. And when you see something you like, one thing that I do is take a photo of it. And that gives you an idea of what it would look like if you framed it that way, if you trimmed it that way. I didn't do anything up to that point other than put a massive paper on the table and take a photo. If I like it, I paste it down. Let's head into your studio and you can show us some of your works. Let's do it. All right. So this is where the magic happens. This is it. This is where I do it. <laughs> All right. Let's see some of your works. Yeah, I can't wait to show you. So I picked out a few things. I, I brought this one because this is one of the first ones I did. This is uh, actually modeled after Rex Ray, who does very simple but elegant collages of simple shapes and colors. Often they're just like this, two different colors. He doesn't use magazine, of course. Uh, he uses painted papers, uh, which I also occasionally use. But my question to myself at this point was, well, how could I mimic his style and make that work? So this contains magazines. All of this is made out of magazines. What I learned pretty early, though, is that it takes a little while to gather a palette. So if you want just blue and yellow, you go through magazine after magazine after magazine and collect those colors. So I end up doing something like what you see here. I make a little pile of blues. These are just collections of different blues out of magazines. Some of them I paint. And then I build something that I call a skin. This is literally just magazine. Wow. Just a bunch of different magazines. All happen to be blue. I wanted blue. And if you look closely, you'll see that this is the skin that's behind this particular splash diagram. The yellow is done in a similar way. I made a skin, and in this case, I painted over it because I didn't really want you to see that much of the detail of a magazine. So you don't care about what images are actually on the skin, right? You just want more of a color palette. That's right. Okay. Sometimes I do care about which image I'm putting in there, but when I'm doing an abstract like this, generally I just want color. I'm right. just looking for color. And I like the fact that if you look closely at any given piece of uh, skin, 
you might find an image of a woman swimming around underneath the water. <laughs> and I like the fact that that woman might end up in one of my collages, and when you're staring at it, you'll find her. Yes, I know. A lot of your pieces do have these hidden images inside. Yes, it just makes me happy. Here's another piece, actually, where I've done the same thing. This, this was made out of a math book. Now, who has good memories of their math classes? No one. It gave me great joy to take a math book and rip it up, paint it. So if you look down in this imagery here, you'll see all kinds of angles and bits and pieces out of a math book, which I then just ripped up and made into a landscape like you see here. And then these circles, these circles here are just cut out of, again, it's a magazine page. I painted a piece of tissue paper and glued it to the surface so you could just peek through and see some of the wording on there. And so it makes a circle more interesting than if I had just painted an aqua circle. Yeah, a plain blue circle, right? Yeah. Same thing is done actually up here in the sky, if you would call that a sky in this abstract piece. I took a piece of tissue paper, which is very transparent. You can paint on it, but when you actually glue it down, this white bit that you recognize as tissue paper just disappears. It becomes transparent. So really all you see, you can see through, as you can see on this one. You can see through to what was behind it, which was a black page with some kind of writing on it. And also the tissue paper adds a little bit of texture it does. to it, so it's just not a flat background. It does. This is just the same thing I'll show you quickly. Same exact uh, process. This is an abstract, so you can show it any way you want to. In this case, what I was doing, uh, the, the two main colors here, the black bit and the red bit, are exactly skins, just like this. Right. They have a little bit more paint on the top of it because, once again, I didn't really want you to see through too, too much of what was happening with the magazine. But all of this black and white here was a fun process. That's just black and white lettering taken out of a, any old magazine and cut up. I made a skin out of it. Right. And then I cut it into pieces and, you know, depending on how you look at it, I, I, I call this art bots because to me it looks like a, I don't know, some kind of art robot yeah, right. riding through space. And then this is one other thing you can do with the skin. So the ones I just showed you are non-representational. Yes. They're just shapes and colors right. and they're just abstract for fun. But sometimes you want something in the painting that you recognize, a bird or yeah. a fish or yeah. a, a face we'll get to a little later. I do this exactly the same way. This background here, it's all, everything on here is out of magazine. The background comes from magazine which I painted on or I might have sanded. I modified the page somehow so you don't exactly recognize that it was straight out of magazine. Sure. And then the fish is done a similar way. I literally make a skin. Here's the first one that I did. I didn't like it so it didn't get used. But uh, this was just a skin of a fish and or a, a orange skin basically. Yes. I trace the fish onto the skin and then I cut it out and then you end up with this lovely texture from the skin so right. it really feels three-dimensional. I do, I've done several with birds and fish and I think that's fun. So shall I show you how to make one? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so let's say I want to make a, an abstract. So I, I literally go collect a couple of pieces of paper and usually I look for something that is small and tight and something that's big and bold and I look for a color and I look for a neutral. The right. neutral could be black or you know beige or something. And then I look for something that's going to add pattern. This is just some random thing that was in the middle of my palette tray. So let's just say I just literally do what I'm doing here. I just place the pieces together. I kind of play around. Maybe I want this little red pattern in there or maybe I'm going to get a third neutrally thing and put it just sort of experiment around like that and I need a jewel in there so I'll just go pick some random jewels and maybe place the jewel and then I get to some point where I have an assemblage like right. this and I go get just a frame because I want to see well what would it look like if I were to frame that would I like it 
right? So I kind of move this around until I find something I like. And maybe I say, I don't like this jewel. I'm going to try some flowers in there. And I look at it with flowers. No, I don't like the flowers. Maybe I want to put a, you know, something blingy in there. No. So literally, I play around with it like this right. until I have a layout that I think is kind of fun. And then what I do is I take a picture of it with my cell phone. So you can remember <laughs> well, later on after you move them around again. Well, that's true, too. But no, actually, what happens is you see in your cell phone without any of this other interference uh, what that would okay, look like yes. if it were framed. And you'd be amazed at how often I, I completely discard something I thought I was going to like because it just didn't look good in that frame. Once I have something that I'm pretty satisfied with, then these babies just get glued down. Oh, okay. And they literally, you can glue them onto something as simple as this piece of paper. This is a right. mixed media paper. Or you can use something like this. I love this. Uh, a wooden cradle panel is what this is called because it basically has this nice frame around it. Right. So you can work with something like this. You can wrap it around the edges or paint the edges. It doesn't really matter. Um, I love working on wood, actually. It's very smooth and stands up to a lot of abuse. So if I decide to sand this or yes, something, that's right. <laughs> I can sand it. <laughs> You mentioned that faces was one of your most favorite subjects and that really has inspired you. So let's see some of your works. I love faces. In fact, after I first started, this is the first face I ever did. <laughs> the first one? Okay. This is a face that's made only of cut up magazine. It doesn't have paint on it or anything. It's just little ripped up pieces reconstructed to make a face. And at the time I was doing this, I was fascinated by hands actually you'll see this hand is sort of down at her chin and she looks the, the name of this is pensive uh, I have another one that really looks sort of like a flighty blonde right it's the same kind of hand I have no idea what position it was right. in the magazine but when I pasted it in she looks like she's flipping her hair off to the side and she looks just ditzy right right so her the name of that one is perplexed because she looks perplexed so back to something I was telling you before that I, I love about faces is that something subtle, in this case the position of a hand, tells the story in a collage. One is pensive and one is crazy ditzy and all that's different is the positioning of the hand. This one also, just to make the point, it's a collage. You can put anything you want to in there. So I had some broken earring and this yeah. one has a piece of broken jewelry in it. You can play with whatever you want to in a collage. But I love the fact, in, in the case of that one, that you can make a face out of nothing but magazine. You don't need paint. Now, here's another technique. These are two different photo transfers, actually. These are completely different examples of the same kind of process. And my experiment, I usually have an assignment to myself. Every time I do a piece of art, I'm saying to myself, well, what do I want to learn? Or do, what do I want to try and see if it works? So in this case, I was curious if I could get a really beautiful photo transfer. Let me show you the photo. So here's the photo. This is a photo. This is actually a photo I took on my iPhone of a portrait that was done of my mother when she was 18. And so I had those printed. And in one case, in this case, what I wanted to do was try to make it as similar to that, poet, that portrait as I could. I wanted it to look a little you know, uh, old, because hers is too. It's peeling up a little bit. Um, but I didn't want it to change very much. And my test to myself was, could I paint on the canvas first, do a, some collage, paint in the area I knew her face would end up and have some collage show through but mostly have it be a, a photo of my mother. Right. So that's what this one is. This, this other one is the same process but what I was trying to do in this case is make it transparent. Could I put a photo on top of a collage that has all kinds of crazy things out of a magazine, have it show through the face but still have you know that it's a face. Right. So I, I 
I think this experiment worked. It was really super fun. I personally like the one that's more collage-like because, well, I like collages. Sure. <laughs> yeah, as an artist, you really have to try different things all the time. They don't always work. They don't always work. A lot of them don't, and, and I just don't worry about it. OK, so this is also a collage. In this case, you'll see I've painted on it quite a bit. Now, I can't paint a face. I can't even draw a face. I, I can't do either one of those things. But I, what I did discover is I can paint on a face. Right. So I can pick faces out of magazines or books that I think are beautiful faces or I like their expression or the position of their head or whatever it might be, and I can paint on them. Right. And the proportion of their eyes and their nose and chin, right. it's already done. Yes, I don't have to worry about where the eyes go. Yes. Well, my next experiment will be to paint faces and really not worry where the eyes go. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Picasso, you like right? Picasso. <laughs> Anyway, this one is, uh, this is called Timekeeper. Wow. It's about, you know, all the little nits and nats that we store up in our life, the little memories, some are useful and some aren't. Right. And they just pop into your mind, sometimes at the most inopportune times, but they're just always there, nit, 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 popping into your head. This is about the passage of time and those nits and nats. And if you'll notice, she's looking sort of at this thing that looks a little bit like a sundial or a clock or something. And if you peek through there, you know I like to hide things. But you if you sure peek do. through there, there's a face, sort of like a person hidden by time. Wow. This one, actually, this is sold purposely. On this one, I sought out to put things together that don't belong together. I was trying to sort of make a statement with the art. And I had an old discarded book that had pictures of uh, churches and stained glass windows in it. And of course, I had my magazines. <laughs> so I decided I would do this come hither look. This woman is standing in, mm -hmm. in this very sort of uh, provocative pose. Right. She's constructed out of you know bits and pieces of magazines. So I don't know, they're pieces of somebody's arm and yeah, ear. There's, and yeah, little. This, there's Little some religious nets. pieces and all just all kinds of various colors. Very right. Very collage looking. Yes, exactly. So she's dressed in religion. Yes. With this come hither pose. She's got a mask on because I wanted her to be a poser. I wanted I wanted the viewer to think about what it means. But it's also about a person who dresses up in something they aren't, somebody who presents themselves as right. something they aren't, hence the, the name poser. Right. And then the one, uh, another experiment I did on this one is to paint out the collage that was in the edges. Okay. So if you really want to bring the eye into the central feature and you don't want to be distracted by all what, what's happening in the edges, um, you paint it out. Especially since her dress is so busy. And I really like this hair, this detail up here in the hair with all the various oranges. All pieces of magazine. Yeah, that's a collage on steroids. That's a collage on steroids. So would you like to see how you make one? Absolutely. It's basically the same process. So in this case, I have a, a face I've painted, which it just came out of a magazine. OK. So you know, I don't actually care for this yet because she looks expressionless and that's not what I would want but just you'll you'll get the the feel so the first thing I do is just uh, in this case I painted her and she implies some kind of palette right so I'm gonna look at her for cues of palette and I'm gonna experiment with what that might look like so I do the same thing I go to my trays filled with color and I pick some neutrals I don't care if it has bits that were cut out because right. sometimes those bits make right. some interesting Something shape. Something from right? the background comes through. Yep, so I, I don't worry about it at all. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm going to make a background here of, not, it's not really anything. It's not all that important at this stage. Let's just say that's going to be my background because it takes cues from the pinks that are in her. So I kind of lay her out there. And then she needs something. She needs hair. I really love to play with hair, as you can see, and what goes in a, a person's head. Maybe it's time, or maybe it's orange hair, or right. who knows? Maybe it's flowers, like you've seen yeah. another one. So I just uh, start to play around with what it might look like. 
and I literally just start to do this. Well, I think she needs some red in there. And I just take bits and pieces of red, and I kind of throw it out there and see, well, what would she look like with red stuff in her hair? And I might take a picture at this point sure. and see whether or not I think she needs to have red stuff in her hair. Or I might say, no, nah, it's not quite it. And I might find a skin. Let's put something weird in her hair. Maybe she needs a funny hat. N nah. Then I might pull a skin and put that's, a skin. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. So, and I probably would land with something like that. Sure. I would just say, okay, you know what? She needs going to widen her canvas here, and that's kind of fun. So there's something about that shape and these colors that I think is kind of fun. So I might decide to paste that down. Or I really might just say, mm, I don't know about the, this color scheme, because she also has aqua in her. So this was my red palette. Well, let's try the blue palette. I will do exactly the same thing. I'll just say, let's pretend I put her down on a blue palette. There's just various skins have you seen. So there she is. She's on a blue palette. Completely different look. Completely different look. And she still needs hair. So in this case, let's just collect some, you know, maybe she needs flowers in her hair. Maybe she needs numbers in her hair. <laughs> maybe she needs a butterfly in her hair, right? So I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just experimenting with what she might look like. Right. And I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll take a, a photo of that and play around with until some, I have something that I, I want to commit to. It's a Either very, the one before or? Yeah, it's a very free-form type Isn't of it? art. It's not like some art's very linear. You know, you do this first, and then you work on that, and then you work on this. This is just the opposite. Exactly. You That's know? one of the, it's the thing I like. This is a total experiment. Either one of these could go in a really fun direction. It didn't take me any time to experiment with that, but what if I had wanted to paint it? Well, I would have had to paint yes. those two color schemes right. and before I knew which one was going to be the, the right. fun one to go right. with. I'd like to walk you through how one of these comes together. This particular one is called La Fleur, and in this first image you can see how I start. I just rip up magazine, I cut it up, and you can see from this image I don't give it a lot of thought, I just patch things together. And then I go from there and I start to add some, some other collage elements. And in most cases, I like to put collage elements into the face and the skin, so you can see me doing it here. Then I start to add some paint. So I started to paint the face. I added some glazes in the background to unify the background collage. I add some dark values. And then I start to add embellishments. In this particular image, you can see I've taken flowers that were cut out of just patchworks of magazine images, and I've cut some actual flowers out of magazines. And here's what it looks like in the end when I've done my best to unify all of the elements. Well, your creative process is absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate you uh, inviting this into your studio, and in particular, showing us how you make these things. It's my pleasure. I, I hope you try it. Now that you've seen a collage artist at work, I hope you have a greater appreciation of the time and skill that it takes to make something by hand. It takes passion, practice, and time. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time on Handmade. Mm -hmm.